Okay, and another uh, point uh, at here uh, you need, we need to like recognize or pick up is uh, if we open this, if we open this valve, if we open this valve, um, and like uh, if we close this one, which means like uh, we we uh, cut off the supplies uh, from the back pressure, and if we realize like the pressure number two, which is the pore pressure sensor, if this keep going up. If this keep going up, this means that there's a leakage. If there's leakage, you will see that like uh, uh, the, the cell pressure and the pore pressure, they equalize to each other. Because the leakage that like uh, the outside pressure go inside the soil through the leakage. And the end of this to become equalized. Or the case that if this is open, if this is open, you see like the, uh, the water level keep rising up. That's another indication that you have leakage. So you need to be very careful. Again, leakage is something you need to be aware of. Once you see leakage, you need to stop the test. You need to redo it again. Otherwise, you just like a waste of your time. So leakage, always keep an eye on the leakage. So we talk about stage one, then now we are ready to go to stage two. So on stage two, we will follow a um, back pressure schedule like this one. So in my spare sheet, uh, the way that I program it, usually like a blue fonts are the one that you 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 uh you input, and red fonts are the one that like uh, calculate. Um and I, I yeah so like you know um the way I do it is by increment of five, but always like I remember, all the blue font here you can customize it, in case that you got like a a special test that we require very low stress, you may want to change it, maybe even just one PSI increments, especially at the seating pressure, um, because that would give you like a very low stress level. Otherwise, like, you know, yeah, it's more for giving like this case, like a practice test, it's okay to set up a high uh, a pressure di difference. It will make your life a little bit easier when you want to test. So when you practice, five PSI is a good number to start with. Okay, now we go to the next stage is we want to uh, uh, back, press, back pressure saturate our samples and we do it according to this schedule. Uh, we have either the, uh, the, uh, the British units or the SI units. Uh, this case, uh, we stay with the British units. So uh, I put this in this order. Uh, this is the order that like, uh, uh, you want to command the computer to the software to do. Or like you know, you you control the um, the the gauge, the regulator. Uh, remember, we never want our sample or like a back pressure, pore pressure. There's many different name on it, but uh, it's the pressure go inside the soil. You don't want the uh, pore pressure or back pressure or sample pressure. It never greater than the cell pressure. Otherwise, the sand will blow out. Uh, so now, uh, we want to change our cell pressure from five to 10. So we pull our sensors again. Uh, and now we want to increase the cell pressure. So we will increase this and we can also read it from the uh, panel. So this is off, this is off, and this is on. Um, oh, by the way, like those two have not been calibrated. So now I use the uh, sensor as a reference rather than this. But if like those two like have been re uh, well calibrated, they should, the two should be agreed. Now it's slightly like different. So I want to turn this to 10. So I'll keep an eye on that until this is like a 10 PSI on the cell pressure. So we see this is responding because once I increase the cell pressure, this one to shoot up. And this one to maintain point of, uh, with the, with the like uh, one pound that we told it to stay at. So now I increase this to be like a, a 10 PSI. And the other thing is like uh, when you increase the cell pressure, make sure like you keep an eyes on like uh, this never one of water. We, remember we didn't like a saturate this line. So you see all the air bubbles there. You know, I like it in the way that I didn't do it. So now we can see like, you know, uh, the bad thing about it. So uh, now like, you know, when we increase the pressure, water still want to go in because you want to saturate the water line that I didn't saturate at the beginning. So you need to be aware, aware never one of water. Uh, go to both, or and you will notice like a 
if needed, make sure like you always have water there. So you want to go to 10, so now we are 10. So the outside pressure is 10 now, then uh, the next thing, the next step, I want to tell the machines to withstand the, uh, the output pressure. Because if it has like a 10 PSI, but this is not enough to resist 10 PSI. So pretty much now we are you are already applying uh, like a tens tensile force to our specimen, which is not a good thing. So that's why, like you know, you know, if you want to do a very good control, you better have this two difference to be uh, not so much difference. Think about it. If if this two like uh, have a huge difference. So the time that it transits the cell pressure and also a command, command the low cell to respond, the time gap right over there is already loading on the specimens. If you have a smaller difference, then the transitions will give you a better chance that you know you're not like a uh, extending your spe specimen too much. So now while I'm speaking, I'm extending the specimens by about one pound already, because according to like you know uh, ten psi, it should be about two pounds. To resist the output pressure, so now I have this go to two pounds, and then you hear like you know the patterns want to move up, try to uh, increase the loading. So now here you can see it's getting to two pounds. So we still it's a brand new low cell, it's reacting quite well. So now let's go to two pounds, um, and the last thing remember we want to that's the key is because we want to we want to. This is the key of doing it now, the back pressure saturations. We want to increase the uh, uh, the back pressure such that give us a better chance to uh, dissolve the CO2 bubbles. So this is uh, uh, the way that we, we saturate our samples. So like uh, the next thing is we need to increase this to um, five PSI. So we take a look uh, on this like a uh, pressure box um, and again, when we do this, be very careful, be very careful, never run out of water. And meanwhile, we have an understanding that this part is connected into the soil specimens, which means you want to keep track with how much water goes in, especially when you get to a consolidation or shearing stage for the uh, CD test. Because uh, that's the volumetric measurements of the pipette there, you can record it, the change of it, and that corresponding to the volumetric change uh, inside specimens, specimens, especially after saturations. Now we are back pressure stage. You know, uh, the this, this specimen is still not fully uh, saturated, so it's not like uh, is there some air void. So whatever goes in doesn't mean like all the like volumetric change because it's still maybe able to the stage that of uh, try to dissolve the CO two. But like uh, but for the um, back pressure stage, always also you must also keep always keep track with how much water goes in, because like uh, if uh, if you do it, keep doing the back pressure, uh, if a lot of water goes in, which means like uh, your sample is not quite, or the system is not quite saturated, then you should keep on doing the back pressure to higher 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 like a stress level, until to the point that you're not seeing much water going in. Today we, we didn't like a I don't think last time we flushed it really well. And I don't think we even flushed with water. Have we flushed the samples with water? Maybe not? No. Uh, no. Yeah, we... <laughs> no, oh. So today may, may not uh, uh, bring us too far. Because like uh, the proper way the proper way to do it is flush the thing whole thing with CO2 for at least like a, a half hour. Uh, remember, remember last time we talked about it, we do the uh, bottom bottom and then we do the bottom top and then we do the top top uh, CO2 and then flush it with water bottom 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 uh, top and then top top such that like you know the whole thing is saturated with water so uh, and when we saturate, saturate uh, flush with water we need to keep flushing it until we don't see more, any more air bubbles to come out so that's the proper way to do it Anyways, uh, today still let's try, but uh, be expect there will be a lot of water goes in because like uh, no, we didn't like us uh, uh, flush it well, uh, you know, at the beginning. So uh, we have the uh, uh, this pressure panels at pressure positions. So we turn this on, so we can 
turn the pressure. Meanwhile, uh, keep an eye on how much like uh, water goes in when I increase the uh, uh, pressure. So now it's like a three psi, and you look at the pipe head. Actually, the water is keep going down. So until we hit five psi there. So now that's just the difference, and you see water start going in, uh, start pushing into the soil specimens. So now I have 10 PSI and 5 PSI, um, and I, with that, I finished the first step of back pressure saturations right here. As I mentioned, we need to keep doing this until we don't see so much water travel uh, into the specimen through the pipette. So on the next, uh, we can go to the, uh, the next steps. So one more time, uh, First, we do the cell pressure first. So we increase our cell pressure to 15. Okay, and then we change the uh, corresponding low cell to be at three pounds. Oops. So again, one more time, control, low control. Make sure this is at three pounds. And then like uh, we change this to fall pressure to 10 PSI. You must keep track with how much water goes in. Still a lot of water goes in because the radiant saturate quite well. So now we have 10 PSI. 